Young Show. Hello? A wise man once said that truth is not something merely to be believed, but it is something to be done. That sounds like another version of don't just stand there, do something. A Midwestern high school is the locale of our story tonight. Morning, Mrs. Hutchins. Oh, Mrs. Hutchins. Oh, Mrs. Hutchins. Yeah, oh, yes, Jamie. Have you finished reading our history papers? Yes. Well, when will we find out about our grades? In class. Oh, then I won't know until the sixth period. That's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Janie, you don't have anything to worry about. Oh, gee, Mrs. Hutchins, thank you. That means I get the new dress for the dance Saturday night. Oh, good. I hope it's deep violet to match your eyes. Oh, how'd you know? Oh, I'm psychic. Good morning. Harvey, when teachers need more income, most of them do. First thing they think about is an outside tutoring job. Frankly, the chances aren't very good. I sincerely hope you're wrong, Mr. Wilcox, because well, I just must make some more money somehow. I understand. How old are your children now? Well, Jimmy's seven, you know, and Greg is four and a half. Your mother's still taking care of them? She was until lately, and, well, she hasn't been very well, and I've had to get some outside help. I don't see how you do it. Well, honestly, I don't either. It was difficult enough when Jim was alive. We are both teaching, but now... I just must get an extra job, that's all. Well, this will be small comfort to you, but you're not alone, Margaret. Most of the teachers of this school either have outside jobs or are looking for one. And believe me, our school is no exception. Well, I'm not going to help solve it by just sitting here now, am I? Thanks again, Mr. Wilcox. You're welcome, Margaret. Those who supported Governor Winthrop agreed with him that a democracy was one of the worst forms of government and that only a few well-born people were fit to govern. On the other hand, those who sided with Thomas Hooker believed, as he did, that the government or the foundation of authority should be established by the free consent of those who are governed. That's excellent, Ralph. But tell me something. You think you understand what it means? Uh, no. <laughs> well, he's honest, anyway. Now, let's just uh, forget the textbook for a moment. What does it mean to us? Jenny. It means that the government has to do what the people tell it to do. Well, it goes a little further than that. Well, if the government doesn't do what the people tell it to do, they can change it. Yes, but uh, who has the ultimate power of the government? That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, the president and the Congress. Uh, not really. Steve? Uh, the people have the real power. The president and the Congress just represent them. So if the government does something we don't like, well, we have only ourselves to blame. That's right. The people have the real power. I know I must sound like a broken record when I keep going over this subject, but I don't want you to forget that it's a God-given privilege to vote. All right, class, tomorrow, uh, we will, the assignment will take you in Chapter 5, and it's a long, ch just a minute, please, did you all hear? Chapter 5 tomorrow. All right, class is dismissed. Right, Johnny. Mrs. Hutchins. Oh, yes, please. Oh, what if the people don't use their power, just don't care, then what? Well, now, you know, you've mentioned one of our country's worst enemies, public apathy. Well, can we do anything about it? Well, for one thing, don't be apathetic yourself. Use your initiative, Steve, and influence others to do the same. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, Jenny looks like she's tapping her oh, foot. Oh, yeah, yeah. See you tomorrow, Mrs. Hutchins. Yes. Bye, Steve. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Bowen. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Hutchins. 
Well, how about it? Have you found anything for me yet? Sit down, Mrs. Hutchins. Oh, I've been working on it. Mm -hmm. The big problem seems to be to try to find something that'll fit into a teacher's hours. Well, yes, I guess that would be rather difficult, wouldn't it? Well, there just aren't very many part-time jobs to be had, and when they are available, they're snapped up fast, mostly by teachers. <laughs> but uh, surely there must be something. I mean... Well, yes, but it's not really suitable, I'm afraid. Uh, on account of the hours? Oh, no, no, I think they'd work out all right, five to nine and all day Saturday. But that sounds perfect. But I just can't see a woman with a master's degree waiting on table. Oh, well, I can. Uh, uh, when will the job be open? Oh, it's open now. Mr. Casey's been looking for someone for a week. Well, uh, do you have his address now? Oh, yes. It's, May I have uh, it? Casey's Grill over at Maple and Second. Oh, that's wonderful. Would you mind calling him, Mrs. Boland, and tell him that I, uh, I'm on my way? Yes, I will. Oh, I sincerely hope he's about to hire a waitress. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs> Number one, we had it yesterday. What about uh, you, Junior? All right, sir. So that's the dismissal. See you tomorrow. instead. Oh, they taught you how to cook. And they learned me in the Navy. Well, they sure learned you good. It was wonderful. You really like it? Of course I really like it. Yeah. You know something about the restaurant business, Margaret? Mm -hmm. You can always eat. Oh, please, get in here. There's a lemon. You want some ice cream on it? Oh, that's all I need. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I baked an extra pie this morning. Thought maybe uh, you could take it home to your kids. That's awfully nice of you. They'll love it. Go after that woman, she's very nice. Well, she's so nice. And it would hardly run. It was just absolutely neat. What has left? Well, she's got some things to say. Hello, Janie. See, she waited. See? Hello, Mrs. Hutchins. Hello, Mrs. Hutchins. Hello. Gee, Mrs. Hutchins, we didn't know that. I mean, we wouldn't have. Two hamburgers, please, and two chocolate malts. Surely. Casey. How about that? Knock it off, will you? She'll hear you. She's right over there. Steve, Mrs. Hutchins, of all the people in a place like this. Yeah, I know. Wow. Aren't you ready? Hurry up. Would that be all, Steve? Yes, that's all, thanks. A dollar eighty out of two. What about? Well, do I tip her? What do I do? You usually tip waitresses, don't you? Yeah, sure, but... I guess that's what you do. <sighs> there you are, Steve. Uh, that's all right. You keep it. Thank you. Good night, Mrs. Hutchins. Good night, Mrs. Hutchins. Good night, Jim. Here you are. 
Hey, waitress, uh, come here a minute. Yes, Ralph? I ordered this well done. Look at it. It's, uh, it's practically raw. <laughs> well, would you like me to take it back? Oh, uh, no, never mind. I'll let it go this time. Thank you. But after this, uh, remember. Yes, sir. Hey, Ralph. If she doesn't get your order right next time, make her stay after school. Uh, order something expensive. Maybe she'll give you a better mark. There's nothing like an education if you want to get ahead of Kate. <laughs> Sure makes a good waitress. Hey, Chughead, think you're calling me sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, there you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, Parker, sure brought in that high school crowd. I never had any of that business before. Never get rich on them, just malt and hamburgers. Well, but it all helps. Besides, it builds up goodwill. So there's no goodwill in their business either. What do you mean? Don't you know why they come in here? For kicks. Quite the thing to be able to order your history teacher around. Why, those little punks. I don't misunderstand me. All, all my students are that way. Just the thoughtless ones. A little service here. I'll give him some Never service. mind. I'll take care of it my way. Excuse me. in the jukebox, will you? Yes, Ralph. Hey, man. I'd like to ask that waitress for a date. Forget it. She'd probably go for a truck driver. <laughs> Now, if you think you know this material well enough to be quizzed on it tomorrow, we can go ahead from here. Otherwise, we'll review it again. So whatever it is, it's up to you. What do you have? Ham on rye. And a pickle in the middle. <laughs> and make it well done. <laughs> Close your books, class. I, um... Uh... I think it's time I came to a decision. I suppose there's no secret that uh, teachers are not very highly paid. And uh, due to certain circumstances, I have had to take a job outside as a waitress in a restaurant. I'm not ashamed of that. There's nothing wrong with being a waitress. But if it's going to continue to be a source of amusement and to interfere with the work of this class, then my usefulness as a teacher is over, and I'd better resign. Maybe some of you are wondering why I haven't resigned before this and gone on to a better paying job. Well, it's really quite simple. I like to teach. I'm very proud of being a teacher. I struggled hard to become one. I worked my way through college as a waitress. But now, I'm afraid that teaching has become a luxury that I can no longer afford. I must continue to augment my salary. But I won't do it at the expense of my students. A teacher must have the respect of her students. If she loses it, she can do more harm than good. Now, many of you in this class show a great deal of promise. And I certainly want to see that promise fulfilled. But perhaps now, my, uh, my only contribution to that end would be to, uh, to hand in my resignation. Class is dismissed. You still have three minutes, class, but you are dismissed.
thank you. I hadn't realized that any of this was going on, Margaret. Are you sure that you're not making too much of it? No. Well, perhaps if I spoke to your class. No, no, no. You couldn't do that. The damage is already done. No, honestly, I... I think the best thing for me to do is just get out of teaching and find myself a full-time job, that's all. Oh, but that would be shameful. You're one of my best teachers. Not anymore. You know how thoughtless some young people are. And to them, I'm a laughing stock. This has demoralized the whole class. I haven't any choice. I realize that your motives are the best in the world. And that's another reason why it would be such a shame to lose you, but because of your high principles. That's a very nice speech, and I'm grateful for it, but... Well... This will be a very sad day for me, Margaret. For me, too. But maybe someday I can afford to come back. Who knows? I hope someday we can afford to bring you back. <laughs> uh, come in. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Uh, I was just leaving, Mr. Tinney. It's all right. Come on in. I had quite a time separating these two. They were going at it tooth and nail. Mrs. Hutchins. Oh, yes. Sir. What's going to happen to Steve? I don't know. I don't know what he's done. Mrs. Hutchins. Yes. I just want you to know, Steve and I don't feel the way some of the other kids do. Like that stinker, Ralph. Is that what they were fighting about? Well, yes. Well. Gee, Mrs. Hutchins, Steve never has gotten over that 20 cent tip he gave you. He feels just awful about it. He can't get over it. Thank you, Jenny, for telling me. No hard feelings? Don't let it happen again. Don't worry, it won't. I really like Mrs. Hutchins. Honest, I do. Is that what this is about? Yes, sir. All right. Ordinarily, I'd give each of you 20 laps around the track and 10 detentions. But as long as you seem to have ironed this out, I'll uh, cut that in half and no laps around the track. Now, you may go now. Thanks, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Wilcox. Sir? Yes? Are you going to let Mrs. Hutchins resign? I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about it, Steve. Well, can't you raise her salary so she wouldn't have to work as a waitress? I wish I could, but it isn't up to me. Who's it up to, then? The voters. The people in this town. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Wilcox. Jane. Oh, how many detentions did you get? Well, never mind that. Look, your mom's president of the PTA, isn't she? Yeah, why? What's well, that? come on, let's move out. Yes, do you think that you'll be able to come to the PTA meeting? Oh, you've got to. Yes. So that's why this meeting was called. Our children actually organized the whole thing. And since it was their idea, we thought the best way to handle it was to hear from a youth panel, to let the students themselves address us of the PTA. First, I'd like to call on Steve Patheke. I guess it's a lot... Uh, I guess it's been a long time since most of you have been to school. <laughs> well, we'd like to bring you up to date on what's been happening since you've been away. I understand from your president that you haven't been meeting too often lately. That's not very good for us. There's been a lot written and a lot said about finding and keeping good teachers for our schools. As you already must surely know, they're underpaid. Maybe you think this is too bad, but there's nothing I can do about it. You're wrong. You're the only ones who can do something about it because you're the ones who pay for your children's education. Our history teacher, Mrs. Hutchins, pointed out to us again the other day 
that in this country, the people are the ultimate power, and that this is a God-given privilege and responsibility, your responsibility. Well, we're going to lose, Mrs. Hutchins. She won't be the first good teacher that we've lost, nor will she be the last, unless you do something about it now. Margaret? Oh, that's all right. She only had one customer. Yeah. Want some coffee? Swell. Yes. I'll get it for you. You know where I was at? No. PTA meeting. PTA meeting? First time I was ever at one. The kids come by our house and ask us if we wanted to go. Uh-huh. How was it? Great. Just great. Oh. But I'm afraid I'm going to lose the best waitress I ever had. Well, what are you talking about, Casey? You said some kids are thoughtless. Yeah? Maybe so. But I guess they started doing some thinking. Why? What happened? This PTA meeting? Yeah? They organized the whole thing. Before they got through there, that place was jumping. <laughs> We're putting out a petition. We're going to put a proposition on a ballot, and we're going to do something for the teachers in our town. We're going to get them a big, fat raise. Gee, that's wonderful. Guess we should have been a little sooner, that's all. What, what, what's the matter? Mrs. Hutchins? Did you hear what happened at the PTA meeting? Oh. Yes, Mr. Casey here was just telling me about it. Well, we've all come to ask you not to quit just yet. Please, Mrs. Hutchins. If you'll just give it a little longer, it'll work out. We know it will. But do you know it will too, Ralph? Yes, ma'am, I do. Well, in that case, of course, I'd be delighted to stay. Well, it's kind of late. Don't you think you all better be getting home, getting to sleep? We're going to be chipper in the classroom tomorrow. Hmm? Go on now. Go on home. Good night. Good night. Good night. And, uh, thanks. Steve. Yes? I have a feeling that you organized all this. We all did. Really? Well, I want to thank you. It was nothing. Steve? Uh, there is one more thing. There is something that's come between us. Your, uh, 20 cent tip. Here. Now. We can begin even. Nice. Now, here's Miss Young. Thank you, John. We get our behavior, like measles, from one another. It's Francis Bacon. Well, good night, and we'll see you next week.